Thank you very much, uh, Adam, for the very nice presentation. So we have time for our questions. Uh, I would like to start with one question. Uh, I presented uh, this morning, but with uh, a vet lab in France, we found a Ferraria species in humans. Uh, and we saw that in a French lab, in uh, the, they showed in vitro that Ferraria could be oncogenic uh, on uh, human cells. So did you observe uh, uh, cancer problems with the dogs or other animals with a Ferraria infection? Uh, it's a good question. So at this point in time in the U.S., we have not identified too many Tylaria infections in dogs. Those have primarily been found in Europe and South Africa. Um, we do have a um, feline pathogen called Cytozoan felis, which does is similar to Tylaria, and um, it actually induces a phenotype to the infected macrophages and monocytes that look exactly like a histiocytic neoplasia. Um, so I believe there is a lot of interest in that. What I believe is that these Tylaria and cytozoan organisms um, basically hijack the mammalian cells um, and induce a oncologic phenotype. And in Tylaria, it's pretty well documented that um, Tylaria can infect lymphocytes, develop an immortal cell line that can grow in vitro forever. Um, but if you treat the cells and you kill the Tylaria in the culture, those cells are no longer immortal. Um, so it's a very interesting thing. I have not yet encountered it. I'm not sure I want to yet, um, but it's a great question. And, and, and again, this whole thing about other species infecting uh, across hosts is important. So hopefully that's a fair answer to your question, which was a long way to say, I don't know. Thank you very much. Do you have questions in the audience So No, and I don't see any questions from the people on my, so yes, Amir Kadir uh, said, I, oh, the question disappeared. Um, I can see two questions, I can read them. Um, one is, do I test or treat Wolbachia every tick that has this pathogen. Um, at this point in time, I'm for Babesia, I've been focused primarily on the uh, vertebrate host. Uh, the protozoa themselves don't have any Wolbachia endosymbionts. Um, I am unsure as to what treating the endosymbionts would have on affecting the transmission. Um, I think it's an interesting question, targeting those endosymbionts as a way to block or, or interrupt transmission. And then Amir asked a question, any affordable accessible Babesia diagnostics in the US? What about Otocolii, which is the deer um, Babesia? Um, and this is where I am a veterinarian through and through, and I'm pretty familiar with the veterinary diagnostic labs. I am not familiar with the human diagnostic labs. Um, so I, I honestly can't say, and, and we can't accept your human samples in our veterinary labs, but I can tell you that our, our veterinary diagnostics, the way we have them designed, will pick those up because um, you know, we would get samples from, from other species. So um, um, there's another question. In Kentucky, we cannot eliminate heartworm until they are disappears from my screen. Do you see it? Yes, sir. Um, yeah, the heartworm infection, you know, as a uh, multicellular um, worm that often has endosymbionts, and we do know that treating the Wolbachia will reduce the fitness of the worms um, and reduce their lifespan and ability to reproduce. Um, again, as a single cell protozoal organism, Babesias don't have um, any endosymbionts that I'm aware of. And, but because they're a, a protozoa eukaryote, um, they become much more difficult to treat because you know, those, those organisms, the Babesias are more closely related to us as vertebrates than they are to a Wolbachia. So um, lots of them, like the drugs that we can kill Babesia with will kill the humans or the dogs. Do I think Babesia makes pit bulls more aggressive? Um, I do not think that at all. Um, it's a good question. I actually think that the pit bulls, um, but I think it's an interesting question because 
you know, we okay. talk about beha behavior changes with toxoplasmosis, et cetera. Um, we, I have not noted that. I am aware, I think, of one study of Babesia microti in mice where Babesia microti infections was associated with increasing aggression in male mice. I believe that study exists, but I'm not 100% familiar. That may be what you're referencing. I don't think I've seen it in the dogs. Thank you.